Okay, by now you probably would have heard about the devastating hailstorm that we had throughout Brisbane, particularly in the western suburbs of Brisbane out near Springfield Lakes, it seems was kind of the epicenter. Uh, so this happened on um, the 31st Halloween of all times on a full moon on the 31st of October, just, to, just over the weekend. Uh, and homes have just been absolutely devastated. One of my staff's uh, houses, I was just out there a week ago at his house. Um, it's a fairly new house that he's, um, he's been working on the gardens and, and, and doing some uh, small re renovations. Beautiful house and it's just been absolutely, gardens have been shredded, solar panels are completely smashed. There was another job out at Springfield that we, we put all the rail up um, and got all the wiring done last Friday. The house has just been moved into a month ago. Now that home is completely destroyed, straight through the, the tile roofs, through the ceilings, smashing windows. Um, fortunately, we hadn't didn't have the solar panels up there yet because they would have been destroyed too. Um, and so there's just so many people that have gone through such a ridiculously difficult 2020 as it is. And now they're putting up with their home being destroyed by once in a lifetime, ridiculous baseball size hailstones. So my thoughts go out to those people. Now, what do you do if, if you're in this situation and your roof has been destroyed by hail? Or even if you're maybe an emergency worker or helping out your friend, you know, to get up on their roof and touch it. Now, I just stress, be very careful um, and please consider not getting up on your roof if you've got solar panels until uh, an electrician has been out to your home. We've already been out to, I, I think so far today, it's just, it's just the Monday after the storm, Monday the 2nd, and we've got about 30 customers of our customers over the years that we're going out to in Springfield Lakes area. Um, and what we're doing is getting on the roof, obviously putting a, a fiberglass insulated ladder, harnessing up, getting tied up on the roof, using our insulated gloves and everything, and sending electricians up there to disconnect every panel. Because what's happening is when, when these panels are smashed, there, there's leakage between those cells, potentially through the water and to the frame of the panels, and then potentially um, through the rail and onto the roof, depending on how long ago that system was installed and, and how good the earthing is on that system. And it's not enough voltage to kill you. If you get a shock off that, it'll just be a little tingle. But if you're jumping up on that roof and not expecting it, and it's in the middle of the day and there's a lot of power being um, going through those panels and going onto the rails and you can get a shock big enough to frighten you and you can fall off the roof. And that's the issue um, with solar panels that are damaged on your roof, uh, particularly when there's a lot of water around and things like that. So please refrain from getting up on your roof, wait until an electrician has come up and disconnected it. What Energex is doing at the moment is going out to homes in the Springfield area and uh, disconnecting homes from power that have gone through that storm and they won't reconnect them um, until their solar has been disconnected. So we're disconnecting them, leaving a safety certificate saying an electrician has tested this and, and has verified that it, every panel is isolated from each other. The most it's producing is uh, 50 volts and that's not really gonna give you the same kind of jolt should there be a fault uh, on your roof. Um, so we're disconnecting them at the moment and obviously that whole roof is gonna have to be replaced in time. So yes, obviously the next thing, um, once we've disconnected it or in, at the same time, obviously get on the phone to your insurance company and gee, I hope you've all got insurance. Um, now what I've heard and I'd be interested to know, uh, and this is obviously gonna be a, a massive test case for it, but you don't have to put solar panels uh, and list it under your insurance is what I've understood. Obviously every insurance company is different. So give me comments down below if you've got solar panels on your roof that were damaged through this hail and you're having troubles claiming replacement of those solar panels under your home insurance. Hopefully we won't have any issues there. Now when it goes to replacing your system, obviously all that's got to be ripped off and even if you've got a tin roof, there's going to be dings on it so your insurance company should be replacing your tin roof even though there's no holes in it. So the whole lot's got to come off and then we replace it again. And what, we, what would happen, imagine we came back then to replace that old rail. Quite often, especially if that rail is five years old and it's a, it's a different brand than we use now or something like that, um, it, those nuts and bolts can be seized up uh, and the clamps can be a little bit out of shape from, you know, from bits and pieces and usually it's much simpler and much faster, so cheaper as far as labour goes, 
is just to bring out new rail when you put your panels in the new position. You, you've got different size, different wattage panels now. You've got completely different, um, a, possibly a quite a different layout than you had before. So it's easier for us to put fresh rail down there and fresh panels back on your roof uh, and wire that back up. Now the problem with this is, let's give me, let me just give you ballpark figures, obviously don't quote me, we've got our pricing on our pricing page for solar systems, but let's say that there's going to be, you've got a 6 kilowatt solar system on your roof. To replace that system with quality panels, you know, Korean made Q-cell panels, you know, three, 360 watt panels now, or maybe 390 watt Q-cell panels, it's going to cost you something, you know, around, around seven or eight grand to remove everything and then, then put them back up there again. Uh, possibly even a little bit more than that. So just think, you know, let's, let's just call it eight grand for argument's sake uh, to replace those panels in the rail. And the reason it costs so much, even though we're not replacing the inverter, is that you can't claim a rebate on those panels that you're replacing that were damaged. Um, this loophole was closed about a couple of years ago because um, companies, you know, cheap dodgy companies were coming in and stalling stool their cheap Chinese rubbish panels that would only last for six months and then they would fail with earth faults. Uh, they would come back out and then put some more cheap garbage on that roof. They would claim $5,000 worth of rebate. The panels only cost them $2,000. So they were actually profiting out, out of installing rubbish panels for the second time. Um, so the government decided to close that loophole good on them as they should and you can no longer claim the rebate as we call it. It's actually called STCs. But you can no longer claim that if you're just replacing the panels. If, however, you replace the whole system, then you can claim the rebate. So what this means is we need to replace the cabling, uh, the inverter, and the rail, which ideally we'd be replacing anyway, and all the panels. So all we need to do extra is to replace your cable and your inverter, and you've got now got a brand new system. So how much is it gonna cost you to give you a new, say, six kilowatt quality Q-cell non-Chinese panel? Uh, solar system with a good quality Fronius inverter, it's going to cost you around about the eight grand mark, give or take, you know. Um, so again, well, it, so it doesn't actually cost eight grand. Get, let, me get, let me get this straight. It would have cost about 11 grand, but you can claim, or we claim for you, around about $3,000 worth of rebate in 2021 if, when we come back to, the, to do the install. So that $11,000 system will actually cost you, or the insurance com company hopefully, about $8,000 or within Kui, you know, $500 or $1,000 difference than it would cost just to replace the panels and the rail. So when you're looking into replacing these systems, it's probably best just to go in there. Even if it's gonna cost you more, you'll get a new inverter, especially if your inverter is five years old and maybe not connected to the internet. You don't have any online monitoring from systems five years ago. It's gonna be way better to, for you to completely renew that system, get a full warranty on that system from a reputable installer such as us at MC Electrical um, and, uh, and you know just start afresh, higher wattage panels. It might be time even just to upgrade your system because now we're talking about you know our average system being around about 8 kilowatts or it's just filling up your usable space with solar panels uh, is really what the best bang for buck is when it comes to replacing solar. So I don't know how that's going to go. You guys are going to have to test the case with your insurance company and see how we go with claiming insurance under your solar system and whether you can just get a, a cash payout for that cost of that system it was originally and put that towards a new system. I think that would probably be the ideal situation for most consumers. Now let me know how you, how you go down in the comments, how you're going with your insurance company as I said and um, the damage that you guys have incurred, it's just, it's just really been horrible and I really, you know, knowing guys that live out there and are having heaps of customers out there, I can really imagine how difficult that must be and a difficult time it is for you now. But I hope that this transition that you get just to, not to just getting your roof and your, your solar system replaced but getting your whole home back in order isn't going to be too painful and that you can get through that quickly. Okay that's me for now and I'll catch you in the next video.